So, uh, first I have to say, uh, ignore the fan. It's hot. It's summer. It, it's, it's just needed. Alright, let's start. <laughs> no, I can't even have my gear game. No! <laughs> Alright, it's been nearly a full month and things are starting to feel natural in school now. Well, at least compared to my old schools. Except now I've actually made some good friends. I'm pretty sure we're good friends. Anyways, I don't really know how to measure friendship. Outside of that outside of that party a few days ago, I haven't hung out with any of them outside of school. If friends just hung out in school and good friends did stuff, I'm already messing up my words. <laughs> we're we're not even a, we're not even 5 minutes in and I've screwed up a message. Get ready for this. I am grossly incompetent at reading. Read. <laughs> Shades focus. Leaving my current thoughts, I realize I've been in the middle of a climbing rock wall in the gymnasium. Huh, why was I spacing out again? Yeah, this is right after the barbecue. Whoa! Oh right, all the blood rushing to my head. I take my seat right next to Olivia and let myself relax for a second. Olivia, as usual, is doodling away on her notebook. Actually, that reminds me, look who else I drew over the weekend. She flips a couple pages of her sketchbook and holds it up for me to see. Much to my surprise, it's none of the- oh yeah, I said this. Olivia decided to draw her as what only I can describe as the most flattering ways to- as a drug cartlet. <laughs> her clothes are even more ripped than usual attire. Her jacket is filled with all kinds of unflattering patches. Her hair is styled into a gaudy mo mohawk that only detracts slightly from her face full of piercings and rings. In fact, she's a couple of rings piercings in her eyelids to the point where I think it would be impossible to keep her eyes open from their weight. She's sporting a smug grin as she looks my way. I mean, it's funny, but how can she even breathe with all those nose rings? She doesn't need to. She's full of hot air already. <laughs> I know that girl. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I just had to come see who made it when Lunaro told me all about it. And when she told me, I was like, oh my god! And I knew when I saw you, you had that artistic spirit. Oh my gosh, I never introduced myself, did I? I'm Hiara. It's so nice to meet you. The fuck, when did you become mod? When he started dating me. That's when he became mod. <laughs> Damn, you're selling yourself like way too short there. Yeah, like, your work is like absolutely go- I'm losing the same one. Yeah, I'm thinking we should hang out sometimes. Oh, you slut! <laughs> Stop trying to get in his pants. Oh shit, the bill's ringing soon. Already? Damn. Well, it was nice meeting you again, Inko. Keep up the good work. Be seeing you later. Yeah, I'll be seeing you real soon, Inko. Uh... Luckily, I'm prepared. Not only do I have my portfolio drive, but I finally set up a cloud drive for it. It is as simple as opening up the application on my phone and swiping to the exact digital copy to and present it to Olivia. Ta-da! I consider this my magnum opus. Well, my little gator that I drew for the for for the thumbnails is mine. That I'll never get better than that. That's that's is that I've peaked. <laughs> magnum opus. I finally got to say it. You keep a copy of it. On your phone? I've got my whole portfolio in the cloud storage. I learned it was a good practice to keep it, uh, I learned it was a good practice from a couple of art blocks. So what do you think? Oh, uh, Olivia squints at my phone as she does her best to formulate her opinion. It's, uh, nice. The compost of it is really, um, something. You mean composition? As was the norm by now, Mr. Ikadim begins class with some sort of violent abuse of school property. Good morning, good morning! Now to settle down, we've got some announcements to go over! I sit back in my seat, suddenly feeling out of spot where Olivia smacked me to check. Yep, bruised. Sheesh. As pale com- as the pale pe- Pedrodon? Pedrodon, yeah I got that right. I think. <laughs> Pteranodon. Continue on reading from the announcement sheet like you did every day. I found myself lost in my own thoughts. Nothing else really happens that I consider it out of the ordinary. Things are new. Like the school itself. Or finally become more mundane. Later at lunch, I'm rattling off my best stand-up to Olivia while Damien's out getting seconds. Liz retreated to her usual space in the rafters. And then he says, Oh god damn! Olivia's hand flies to her nose, trying to... And failing to contain the snort-filled laugh. 
It sets off a chain reaction as my own laughter spills over my mouthful of cheap school burger. <laughs> God, you suck at ca comedy, Inka. Olivia drinks greedily from her canteen to elevate her sore vocal cords. Is that why you're all out of breath? It was a pity laugh. Stick to photography. You got a better one? The mood is slow to settle, but once Olivia has caught her breath, she speaks with a snide smile. In fact, I do. Oh, perfect. I was looking for you two. Olivia cast her eyes down to her lunch, sparing her mystery meat roughly through a talon. Hey, Ben, what's up? I figured I'd come by and congratulate you on your submission entry. This again? I mean, it's my best piece, but all the praise from it is still surprising. It's exhilarating, all these compliments and everything. Thanks, man. Uh, hey, maybe I'll be the winner of the contest. What do you think, Olivia? The, greater gr the green gator girl flinches. Ben shakes his head. Also, Olivia, it's great to catch you here. Principal Scholar wants, wanted me to remind you that you need to clean up after yourself. Leaving messes in the classes can disrupt students in other periods. Scaler said that? Why not tell Olivia herself? She's busy and tired of reminding you. Do you know how hard it is to scrub baking soda out of the carpet once it's dried? Can you try not to make other people's lives harder? Ben, what the hell? I didn't mean that. I went too far. I'm sorry. <laughs> Come on, Ben. Leave her alone. My point being, Olivia, this is completely ridiculous. I expect better from you. Expect? How can you have expectations for her? That came out a little wrong. Well, I expect her to do the bare minimum and not waste my time. I love you. Doesn't even bother looking at Ben. Instead, she's looking at me with that sad face until she quietly wheels away from us. Guys, stop talking about balls in my fucking chat. He fists his hammer into his ball. Empathy. <laughs> stop with the difficult. I know this word. Empathy. <laughs> it's E P. Fanny. Infinity. Oh, you use the vending machines out there? Anything good there? I've been enjoying the atomic hot taquitos. I hope I said taquitos right recently. I'm I'm so white I can't say spicy right. <laughs> On my way to photography, I'm still a bit caught up by what just happened. I think I'm starting to see how Ben accomplished that. I mean, ordinarily, an incident like that would be embarrassing. It would be detrimental to your social standing. On my first day, I went through something like that. An event so humiliating that people spread rumors for days. Sure, they died out pretty quick, but the fact is it happened. That line of thinking is cut off as I round the next corner. I wanted to talk to you, Olivia. At the center of the hallway, intersecting, I see Mia and Olivia. Oh, come the fuck on now, Olivia. Don't be such a killjoy. I'm trying to be nice here. The grin on Mian's face is jovial as she stands over the wheelchair bound girl, her tail lazily swaying as she eyes Olivia. Man, I've never realized how lethal those spikes on her tail look. After all, it'll be nice to have someone around as talented as Olivia, don't I? Behind her are a pair of similarly smiling Saurian girls. Actually, wait a minute. Those two. They're Mia's friends? I mean, she knows her way around a palette and canvas. Right, Livia? A pair of Jalika Picasso here. That's you. Right? I can't imagine how useless you must feel otherwise. I'm so glad you're able to put those thoughts aside and paint some things you like. Mia stick takes a step towards Olivia, her previous expression taking more of an ominous air. Yet for all that talent, untapped potential, you seem to lack the most basic expected functioning young adult. Mia's lips part, revealing a cruel grin. I've heard you've been really dirty, messy little baby, leaving your stuff anywhere in class and getting it all over the place. They should stick you in a cute little bib. <laughs> Kira and Lunara jeering loudly over Olivia. Normally, I wouldn't have to waste my time trying to single you out, but I'm going to use this moment to make you sure you get the picture. Benny was supposed to join me for lunch, but he had to stay behind to clean up after your mess. You've got your issues? You can't ride a bite, whatever. That's your fucking problem. Don't make it mine, Livia. Or do I need to start being a problem for you? 
<laughs> yeah? Does Ben look like your nanny? Well, she does come pre-packaged, which the stroller... <laughs> come on, Mia, this girl's got a line. It's not like she can stand up to you, or anyone. What? I'm just happy you live here. But if that did hurt your feelings, I'm really, really sorry. Kira? I swear, I'll kill you one of these days. Olivia takes the opportunity to move past Mia. Mia takes no time to toughen her stance and continue to spew her insults. What? Leaving so soon? No response. And so quickly, that's almost normal walking speed. I was honestly thinking you need a cooler nickname to go with your need for speed. Hot Wheels. An instant, Olivia stops to a squeaking halt. Gone was her stoic place, and place where eyes wide with shock. How the hell? Olivia's face falters. Mia quickly steps in again to place a foot on her left wheel. Your brain dead Finhen friend told me back in gym class. He went on how you had it back when you were still soiling your diapers. Honestly, I think you should embrace it. So say it. Well? Are you retarded, you stupid bitch? Fucking say it. God, do you need a fucking speech therapy? Say it. Hot wheels. Hot wheels. See, I know you could do it. Kind of fitting. I agree with half of it. Olivia's claws dig into her armrests. Maybe that's the nuance? The point is only half of it works. Ha <laughs> Mia turns to look at Kira and Lunara, inciting some giggling from them. I'm sure you wouldn't mind making it cool again, though, right? I mean, you were such a winner back then. Mia leans in close, her voice now a harsh stage whisper as she glared daggers, daggers to Olivia. What's wrong, Hot Wheels? Don't want to talk anymore? Am I not good enough for you? Even from far, I can tell Olivia's starting to lose her composure. Her tail lays limp on the floor as if the energy to hold it was drained away. I think this is bullying. No shit, Sherlock! <laughs> My legs move on their own accord as I cross into the hallway. I'm instantly noticed. Mia's already registered my presence and her expression changes. My heart starts to beat quicker and harder. Time's up for being indecisive. Not defend, just sh show support. As much as I want to go off of Mia and her posse, Olivia wouldn't want me to try standing up for her again. Not after I tried to handle it with Ben. <laughs> I think I made the right decision. <laughs> I, I've been paying attention to the story. <laughs> Besides, I'll probably fumble the words and make myself look like a fool anyways. There's really not much I can do. But what I can do, it's nothing. Say nothing, do nothing, just wait for Olivia to pass by. She stops a bit in confusion, but quickly remembers she's currently on the run. When she passes by, I follow down, follow down the same hallway, slowing my pace to be slightly behind her. Olivia turns to look at me with equal parts surprise and dread. I think a part of her fears that I'm about to say or do something really stupid. Instead, I merely give her a warm smile. To be picked on by that many people at once, all certain they were doing no wrong, it's terrifying. In moments like this, she should so she should know that someone's got her back. Even if I have nothing to offer, at least at the playing field at least the playing field will be at least less one sided. And now she has someone beside her. The hell? Hey, I know that jacket. And I know that bullseye for a head from a mile away. The group starts to follow behind us. Olivia glances over to me. I return another small smile. Well, 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 if it isn't the baldy. Coming in to save the day or something? I don't respond. Instead, I keep my head forward and keep walking with Olivia. That seemed to catch me a bit off guard, as I can hear the gears in her mind visibly start to turn. Hey, I'm still talking to you, Hot Wheels! The sound of shuffling boots starts to gain on us. Just because you have Baldy here to protect you isn't going to save your hide. Neither him or any of your dipshit friends. I can see Olivia's claws digging into her armrest at the name, but otherwise she maintains her apathetic leer. The more we walk, the more obscene, obscene More swear words. <laughs> this is why you don't have any real friends, you skipless salamander. I don't know if Olivia has a plan, because I can't fully understand why she's letting Mia walk all over like this. But I remain steadfast and believe she knows what she's doing. That's all I can really tan do. Who even want to be a cripple like you? 
I can hear Mia laughing at her own words. Olivia, please change your mind and waste this bitch. So you got to something to say now, Hot Wheels? She shrugs. If that's how you feel, Mia. What? Olivia doesn't say anything else. She only turns around and begins to wheel herself down the hallway. For a moment, I stand in a place as I watch Mia try to process what happened. Even her posse looks confused, unsure what to say. Uh, you really got there there, uh, Mia. <laughs> yeah, definitely show that leathery bitch. Mia jerks her head to her cor courts and glares at them, angered by their pity comments. Then she stares me down with obsidian daggers in her eyes. Well, that's my cue to leave. With the grace of the headless chicken, I scramble down the hallway to catch up with Olivia. Oh, no, oh, no, 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 no. Not alone, not with them. Dread fills me as I hear the pursuing predator's heavy footsteps approach me. I'm grabbed from behind. I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm... What? Suddenly, I'm violently pulled aside, right into the school's elevator, by the collar of my jacket. Oh, thank God it wasn't Mia. She jams the key into the slot and smashes the button to the second level. As the door closes, we hear Mia roar out for us. Next time I see those two again, I'll make sure that oversized Kubel has something has to use the wheelchair instead of her. Well, I died messed up her. You know what? Fuck her. <laughs> I uh appreciate what you did for me back there. I'm surprised. Not sure what to say back, really. Instead, I smile back and nod. In return, she gives me a half smile before recompossing herself. You should uh Roll with me in the elevator now. How come? Well, you've just become enemies, enemies with her. If she sees you, you'll be a wad of gum under her butt. Her butt. Ha! <laughs> oh, joy! Oh, joy! Yeah, your best bet is to avoid her for now. This way you stay out of the hallways. I appreciate it. Don't mention it. Wait, the elevator will stop me from beating the snot out of me and the entire rest of the school? Yes. We hear the small electrical ping of the elevator as the doors slide open. History class is as bland as it usually is. Fuck you, history's interesting. Thank you. You believe me, right? Pardon? Olivia's nostrils frail with the ex- I, I know how to say this word, but my brain's not allowing me to say it. Exacerbated. Uh, that's close enough. <laughs> Snore. The bird's upset over Mia. Yeah, they're pissy at Mia. That doesn't mean I still don't want to fuck her, but you know, you know, you know. I like a bad bitch. What can I say? What's, uh, what's the matter, Danyman? When Mia asked about that nip cane stuff from so long ago, I just blurted it out. She didn't say she used it for something so unscrupulous. I'm ashamed it took me more than a moment to figure out what was happening. I guess Damien feels uh, culpable with what Mia said, but why? You don't know what that word means. I forget her voice. How did I do her voice? <laughs> How did I do Liz's voice? Inko, really? I didn't mean for any of that to happen. Hey, I believe you, man. Your heart was in the right place. Olivia told us what happened with Mia, calling her some sort of nickname. Damien leans back with an unresponsive Olivia, hands spread out in, supp in supplication. She said you were there, too. I was, yeah. Sound it out. <laughs> <laughs> Olivia, you loved that nickname when, when we were kids. Damien's words were dismissed with a roll of their smoky eyes. You didn't really mean it, Olivia. I know already. You were just being you again, Damien. Sometimes I wish you weren't, but whatever. There's a grittiness to her voice once more, but she continues on. She holds her canteen up to her lips, but drops it immediately. Empty again. The grit in her voice is back, and she presses on. And the nickname is that. It's just a nickname. I'm just... I don't want to hear it again. Especially from her. Especially if it gets... It's just again under my skin. Olivia stares at Damien for a while. Uh, she, she, she's staring at his abs. And, and Damien and Liz are kind of just eyeing each other. Well, actually, Liz is paying attention to Olivia. Why not? Wait, did I say that? Why did I ask that? Just kind of came out. Liz notices Damien still organizing his thoughts. Seeing neither of us are going to answer coherently, she sighs. Well, I wasn't around for this bit, but they were freshmen in middle school. 
Jamie and Livia would take the bus every weekend to an arcade in the city. And I guess he came up with a nickname around then, and it stuck. Uh, that's like half right, but I didn't come up with it. I bought a chunk of change for us to play stuff with each other, and I matched just about anything. There was a quarter, and it probably still is. I don't know if I won once. She stood to win something, but it was like a switch went off her head. I never seen Olivia get like that. Some of those teenagers were wearing, watching too. They saw everything. A couple challenged her. I ran out of cash, and sure enough, she ended up clearing the house all afternoon. And it was like she'd talk about it at school all week until we go back for more. And then, like, a month of her to be recognized at some local champion. Sometime along the way, people started calling her Hot Wheels. I don't remember really who or when, but I do. You know it's proof that she got fire in her wow yeah that's i had fun back then i guess i forgot i wasn't supposed to bring it up have things really changed that much you did it again sorry you just can't help yourself but when you're right that was the best time of my life the name hot wheels belongs to 10 year old me not current me. Hey, that's a great story. To be recognized so well and get a cool nickname sounds amazing. Being a champion well being a winner. I'm not. What? I'm not a winner anymore. That's because you don't go to the arcade anymore. If it's the one I'm thinking of, it's like only like a half hour away. Olivia looks at Liz like she recommended everyone watch the newest Nets like sticks anime. <laughs> Well, if the story to anything to go by, I'd like to see you be a winner again. Livia's breath seemed to hitch for a moment. I'm sure these guys want to see it too. Damien's the one that dragged you to our lunch table all the time, right? Look at him. He's nearly kneeled over because he's afraid of losing that part of you. And Liz? I'd like to think I... I, I think I'd like to see why you and Damien are gross friends. Yeah! And just as quick as I gained that bravo do bravo do bravo do to speak up, my words left me immediately. Uh, I think I accidentally put Olivia on the spot there. Whoops. Well, uh, her tail rolls around the ground a bit in contemplation. If you guys really care that much about it, I wouldn't mind to get it from you guys. All at once, Damien lights up. Y yeah. All right, Hot Wheels is back. You guys refer to Liz and Inko. <laughs> hey, if we were getting in the name out again, we should go visit the arcade together sometime. I'd rather not. Okay, how about a better name like Death Roll? Olivia swears her ta tail to trip him, but he's fast enough to jump over it. Damon's words flooded out as he contemplates the new nickname for Olivia to try and appease her, many of which are shot down by her or leave Liz and I chuckling. Hey, I'll roll with you. Really? I mean, I don't mind, of course. It's nothing. The house is only a few blocks away anyways. Besides, I'm sure somebody would beat you up if I take and take your lunch money if I didn't. There's plenty of time to make it to the next train, so the two of us take it easy. The sun finally managed to break through the autumn clouds, making the walk almost unseasonably warm. I thought the last day of summer was, like, weeks ago. <laughs> it was. I don't mind staying warmer. A little longer, though. Feels pretty great to me. Olivia gives her chair an extra hard push, letting her glide unaided for long enough to stretch out her arms and bask in the sunlight. I might have figured you'd like the heat. On what? Because I'm a dino? No, 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 not like that at all. I'm just playing. Relax. You're pretty touchy on that stuff, aren't you? I'm not allowed to curse? What? <laughs> you can't do this to me. <laughs> you can't do this to me. I just think it's important to be educated is all. Even if you are, what, the only human at our school? Olivia flashes me with a cheeky grin as my train pulls up. I gotta admit, but her mischievous little nature is a little infectious. As the train doors open, I leave Olivia with one final jab, something I know she'd appreciate. Hey, whatever you say, Hot Wheels. I neatly dodge out of the way of her slashing claws and stepping smartly onto the train as the closed door. Inko, you son of a- Get back here! See, I can still do no swears if I have to read it. <laughs> As the doors ding shut behind me, I can see an irate, still blushing Olivia waving her fist as the train begins to pull away. Still giggling, I manage to squeeze myself in the seat next to a yellow-scaled woman smelling faintly of hot dogs. You know, I may pay for that comment later. But the look on her face was totally worth it. While the calendar set- Well, calendar, calendar. 
While the calendar officially says it's officially fall, the thing I really noticed was the increasing number of clouds in the sky. Better safe than sorry, though, which is why I brought my fancy compact carbon fiber umbrella. Carbon fi- isn't that a little excessive? And when do you know it, I end up having another chat with Mr. Ferris on the ride to school. Hello, Mr. Dino. How are you this morning? Doing fine, sir. Thank you. And how are you? Doing well. I'm currently kind of helping a guy who's writing a fic about Olivia being isekai'd. Oh, God. Being- Transporting yourself to a uh, with a wheelchair into a wheelchairless world is that's something. That would be an interesting concept, yeah. Why is my chat full of degenerates? I haven't even shown my degeneracy yet, and yet it's already gone. Maybe it's just like a an aura thing. I just attract degenerates, right? <laughs> I rest in Egan's class, popping my spine against the curve of my chair. Apparently, today's a short class. Because, well, apparently today's a short day because of the assembly, so the period will end much earlier than normal. It means we got most of the period to slack off, do homework, do homework. I glance at the desk nest to be in the hopes of catching Olivia's latest artistic masterpiece when I notice she's not drawing. Instead, she's only fidgeting. Hey, Olivia, you seem a bit nervous. I mean, do you think they're alright? Oh, uh, yeah, um, sorry, it's just that I. I've been hearing rumors. That the school shared hard drive might have been corrupted. Wait, really? Yeah, really. How would something like that happen? Not sure. But I'm scared that it might have messed with the art contest sim submissions. I think you should check out your entry on the website to make sure it's okay. Finally, the page loads end. Oh. Looks like the submissions have closed. What? I hold the phone up for Olivia and show her the page. The submissions have been closed since the voting started last week. I am now very differently ethnicity. <laughs> oh, sheesh, I thought Mr. Icon had spooked me. Olivia's all seized up. Well, that's quite reassuring. With the submissions closed, there's no chance of any hacker messing with them. Olivia doesn't seem convinced, still drumming her fingers on the desk. Hopefully she'll feel loads better when the preliminary winners are revealed. Speaking of which, when are the... As the bell sounds, the class begins to pack their things. I can encorrals everyone to a single filed line. All right, everybody, we have an assignment to roll, so stick together. Before I join the rest of the line, I look back at Olivia, who seems to be stalling. Come on, I'll walk with you. Are you calling him Ikadin? I might. I'm calling him. I'm saying Ikadin. I'm probably getting that wrong. <laughs> It's not a long walk to the auditorium. Despite the Ikadin's best efforts, most of the class splinters splinters off to sit with their friends. Having expected this, he shrugs and makes his way over to the back of the auditorium where the other teachers are. Olivia and I are left to the struggling crowd trying to filter into the cramped theater of the school. It's going to be difficult finding some of these seats. It's fine. It's I have a spot. Olivia wheels herself down the pathway, which I follow suit. She heads down the aisle until we're at the first row seats. Olivia parks her chair into the empty spot in which I take the seat next to her. Best seats in the house, right? Can't complain. As the hall fills with more students, my anticipation rises. Oh man, I can hardly wait for the announcements. So, do you think I have a chance? Huh? Oh, maybe. Ph photography isn't super popular, but... Olivia folds her hands on her lap, staring at straight ahead as her voice trails off. Oh, you, you, ca uh, you, you called him La. <laughs> See, I noticed it was an eye. <laughs> hey, guys. I have to remind myself that this is normal. Hey, Liz. I can't believe it's finally here. Gosh, I'm so excited. Me too. By the way, where's Damien? <laughs> hey, guys! I'm over here! For real, sit down! Damien immediately stops and takes a seat. I turn to face Olivia and prepare to cheer alongside her, but I'm stopped in my tracks when I notice that, unlike the rest of her peers, Olivia seems to be uneasy about the prospect. Almost scared, even. Before I can ask Olivia why her sudden change in mood, Scaler continues, continues with her words, cutting into my train of thought off. And here we have the five semi-finalists. The pieces of the five skillful students who've all beaten the other competitors came up, followed by the names of the victors right above them. Alas, I see no photography submission in sight. At least I gave it a shot, right? Oh man, I didn't even make it in. Liz next droops. Melancholy, like a melancholy noodle. I can't help but feel for pity for the bummed out Brachiosaurus. 
Why did I get that word right, but I got all these other ones wrong? Bzz, bzz. Checking my phone, I see. Tell Liz to come back here, bro. I'm sure Damien got that handled. Despite my silly mood, I look back to the semi-finalist winner and can't help but be amazed by them. Each artwork is impressive in their own right. Their colors blending wonderfully and the figures beautifully designed. It's easy to say, see why these voters were, leave were voted for the winners. The last one especially catches my eye. The scenic landscape, the setting sun looks stunning. If not for the slight stylization of the skyline and fantastic color palette, it could be probably passed off as a real photograph with some filters pasted over it. I'm no art critic, but if I were to label it as a masterpiece and easily the best out of all of them. Let's give our winners a big round of applause. I wanted to check on the winning paintings a bit more. Were you want to come along? She considers for a moment. No, go on without me. I need to use the restroom. All right, I'll see you at the lunch table then. Aaliyah gnaws and starts down the hall, following the flow of students towards the lunchroom. Let's see. The principal said it was room 237. First thing I noticed walking to the classroom is the amount of people checking out the gallery. While I didn't expect to be filled brim with eager students, there's a decent amount of people here, the about a baker's dozen or so. Maybe more will come by when they finish up their lunches. But now it's time to see the one I've been eager to get a look at since I first was shown. Ooh. I wonder if this was actually painted. Po it's possible, considering the detailing. Actually, it would have been easier to paint it in real life than it would to actually do a digital work of this. From what I recall from Mr. Ikodin's lessons, it's made with acrylics, explaining why colors of it seem more vibrant. It stands out in the defiance of other paintings in the contest, which m most of which were either violently absurdist or meaningless or muted still lives of ordinary objects. It's a meadow of mystifying colors, the organic line drawing viewer drawing the viewer deeper into a piece into the piece as i feel this would be a place i would wake in within a fantastical dream there's no rigid structure or forces and metaphors here just a fantastical merger of the creative expression and real world beauty i can still feel, feel my fingers itching for the familiar weight of a deal salar this is a piece that i want to immortalize in my portfolio it's hand down the winner of the contest in my eyes i simply must find out who made this Looks like this breathtaking show of artistic talent was created by a semi-finalist winner. That's a problem. Ah, Inko, I'm glad you swung by. It looks like you were admired the art contest entries. I told you St. Hammond's artistic promos were unparalleled. That's not mine. What's not yours? I tried to say more, but the words won't leave my mouth. Ben's eye falls into mine to the bottom of the painting in front of me, and I watch it as he makes the same realizations as I do. Inko, you didn't... Did you paint this? I had no idea your style was so developed, so humble if I would have known. That's not my entry. It's not? No, mine was a, photo a photograph. But what's your name doing on that one? It must kind of be some kind of mistake. A million scenarios come to mind. They must have gotten the wrong name somehow. If they did, I think the real artist would come forward by now. Then the submission website must have been hack or broken. But our school checks like stuff like that. If it was, we would have known by now. Then, Inko, are you sure you didn't submit somebody else's piece by accident? Of course I didn't. Why would I do something like that? You're, you're the only one who can log into your account, Inko. Sudden, everything stops. My account did somebody... Look, relax, all right? We can get this sorted out. Just don't panic. Ben lowers his voice. But Inko, just to be clear... What? You didn't get just a bit of extra help, right? Ben looks at me through the edge of his glasses, eye to eye. There's some real stakes in the contest. Cheating is taken very seriously. Especially fraud. The word echoes round inside me. Fraud. Makes my bones chill. There's ingenuine, faker, liar. They're all bad in different ways, but fraud is dribbling a frigid condemnation. No, I swear, I submitted a photograph. Ben relaxes his shoulders. All right, just making sure. Sorry to alarm you. You're going to be all right? Sorry, I need some air. Hey, feel free. I'll let Scalar know, okay? Uh, thanks, Ben. 
No problem. Take it easy. It's Olivia's, isn't it? It's, it's fucking Olivia's, isn't it? <laughs> A new fear grips me at the born of from this mental imagery provided by that sight. Those cruel thoughts push me up steps faster than humanity, possibly even as my rational mind tries to reassure me. Running across the deck, my breath is caught in by my throat when I reach the middle. She's on the ground, HUD slumped out. There's damage and soaked school supplies scattered all over the walkway. Oh gosh, is she okay? My foot shifts, trying to force me closer. So her head lifts to the sound of my shoes squishing on the floor. Inko? Her tear-stained eyes stare at me with a dead expression. Her voice sounds weak. Olivia. I feel like I can finally breathe again. Slowly Olivia pushes herself and I know she's lying on top of a paper shreddings. The feeling of relief slowly fades away as I remember why I was looking for her. We stayed silent, only staring at each other as the rain continues to bear down on us. She simply sits there, letting herself grow more and more soaked from the rain. Do you want to talk? No, not out in the open. I grab my compact umbrella from my backpack and unfurl it. It doesn't do much to dry living it off, but at least she's not getting more soaked. The umbrella is placed between. There's an amber alert, but I'm not, I, I'm not on, like, I'm not able to help, unfortunately. If I could, I would, but sh they're going to do that again. They, they always do those amber alerts twice. Fuck off, kid, we're watching the peak. Lewis, that's not the way to. Th there's. We're having an emotional moment. You can't just say, Doctor, just respect. Let us watch the stream in peace. Oh, right after I got an Amber alert. Come on, man. This is supposed to be a suffer moment and we're making fun of it. Alright. <laughs> I'm sorry. You, you shit me. It's odd. We've sat together before, but sitting on the ground in the rain. And the room is just a little claustrophobic. There was bits of paper melted into the pavement, soaked by rain. Though torn apart and waterlogged, I can start, kind of sort of make it out. A tree? A rough sketch of one, anyways. Like the one that stood promptly in my false submission. So you did do it. Inko, please, I can explain. I didn't have a choice. What? I know what I did was wrong, but I didn't have any other way. It wasn't a choice not to trick me? She avoids looking at me, focusing on the scraps of paper scattered like the floor like confetti. On the floor like confetti. It wasn't to trick you, I just... <sighs> I get it, you're mad at me. I'm not mad, I'm just confused. I thought we were good friends. I wasn't expecting it, expecting you. She pauses to give her throat some reprise. Her usual water bottle isn't anywhere nearby. A shaky breath escapes her mouth. When you came around, I thought you were no different than the others. That you were some sort of self-centered, pretentious mitwit who only cares about his image. That's when I got the idea of using you to swap out your art with mine. You didn't seem like the kind of person who cared about how much he gets the attention from others, just that he gets it. Her description of my character feels really productive, but the ache in my chest tells me it hits a little too close to home. But that's not what I think of you now. Aikiden's the only person I can trust. So when he went to the bat for you, saying we'd make good friends, I was worried. What's so special about this guy? I honestly got scared he'd be wrong. That you'd just be like everyone else, and I'd be setting myself up for failure. But worse than that, Inko, I was afraid he'd be right, and I'd have to face what I'd done to myself. And then I've gone and done something like this. S Witching my contest entry? She nods, swallowing hard. I wasn't thinking. Suddenly everything was out of balance. Everything I created, all my work. My own little world was suddenly changing and I had no control over it. I just had to do something. I didn't know I was doing that. I'm so sorry. She stops to process my words and continues. I, I knew I'd get caught. It's stupid. I was hoping for it even. Someone to figure out what was swapped so it'd be, ch it'd be changed and everyone would be none the wiser. She turns to face me with silver eyes, welt up with tears. I'm sorry. Please don't hate me. I, I just don't want to go back to being the person I used to be. The person who didn't care about hurting you. Her head tilts down over the violent hitch of breath. Ivory claws extend its grip at the knees in a plainful display, and yet Olivia chokes back any sound she'd make. Her body shudders with every heavy breath from her, and I realize every last defensive barrier she had was completely gone. 
Olivia's laid herself bare. I'm only <laughs> leaving only the crying girl desperately trying to silence her pivotal tears. I can't hate you. Faced with those unbidden words from Livia, I'd have a heartless bastard do anything except her apology. It's clear that the guilt should been rotting in her consciousness ever since. What she did was wrong, no doubt about it. But then again, thinking of her circumstances, how can I blame her? How could anyone? I probably would have ended up having to do the same thing in her shoes. At this point, Olivia's put herself in enough stress as is. There's one thing she needs to hear right now, and it's that I forgive her. I don't hate you, Olivia. Y you don't? No, I don't. I won't lie. I definitely felt hurt when I first found out. But the fact you're willing to admit your stakes shows that you're growing as a person. I'm really glad I got to hear we're friends. It's refreshing to he hear her see it. I was worried she would only be putting up with me. Olivia seems understandably puzzled about my lack of anger towards her. I figured you'd be more upset. Is this of your pity? If so, I don't want it. It's not pity, Olivia. I'm accepting your apology. I don't want you to feel guilty about it. The sooner we can put this all behind us, the better. But I can tell you're a good person. So don't worry about it, all right? I offer her my best smile. Olivia slowly nods. When you put it that way, I guess. But still, truth be told, I deserve to fail to actually face consequences. I'm such a... <laughs> I had to check to... <laughs> I had to check that I could swear. <laughs> I'm such a fucking fraud. All over a damn painting. Olivia, you did what you thought you had to do, and you're saying sorry for the consequences. That's all that matters. I scooch closer to Olivia. Huh? That was you taking action in a way I never thought I would have guessed. A uh, crime of passion, I think it's called. I'm probably wrong, but she gets the idea. The world runs on those. You don't need to change. I don't think you did anything wrong. She leans her head against the wall of the railing before looking at me with a half smile. Thanks. You're right. I'm just throwing everything away like an idiot. I'm just scared. I'm here with you. Coats the rest of the tired grin from her and she looks down shredded papers again. After that, everything was said and done. Things became quiet. Beneath the solace of my umbrella, we relax together. At least until Olivia starts shifting uncomfortably. I sit and watch as she takes her calves and shifts into the side with one hand. Her tail comes around and presses into the paper-filled floor beneath her. Before her, keeping up her upright as she starts to lean forward. Finally, with the strength of her tail and one arm, Olivia lifts her hips from the floor and swings her shins fully beneath her. She smiles as she kneels over to me. You're just going to sit there? Crap, I guess I was gawking stupidly. But it's just so fascinating seeing a girl maneuver herself in these odd yet well-practiced ways. I'm kind of jealous, actually. I wish I had the tail to do something so that she could. I press my down hands down on the floor and push myself up. I don't know why. I had thought to stand, but instead shifted myself into a kneeling position too. We're face to face now. For a split second, I feared the worst as Olivia drew me into a hug. I don't know what she'd do, but this... I like this. Wherever strong her arms are, they're wrapped around my chest feels exceptionally tender. I did the thing. Oh yeah, that's right! I got the hug! I did it! My own arms have enveloped her, returning her into the embrace in a sim similarly soft way. As her arms loosen, I draw back, though I don't want to take my hands off her. That was nice. To make it weird. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Through the sounds of the rainfall hitting the umbrella, my ears suddenly pick up the noise of what sounds like squeaking. I look down to see that there's something shuffling in Olivia's pocket. Did the bugs eat it? Hey, little guy, I nearly forgot about you. Had a nice nap? That's a rat. Oh, right, you two haven't met each other. Inko, this is Guts. Guts me, Inko. Oh, uh, hi, Guts. I uh, awkwardly wave at the, appar <laughs> the <laughs> apprehensive looking rodent. Guts from Berserk. No! <laughs> I don't want to torment your little rat. Olivia lifts Guts up to her shoulder gracefully, like a hand in an elevator for him. You brought him to school? Well, yeah, I really needed him today since, you know, all that crap that happened. She gave Guts a few scritches under his chin. I pick him sometimes when things get rough. N and nobody noticed? You haven't. Touche. We should probably get back to class. Here, hold this. 
I give Olivia the umbrella so she and the rack can stay dry while I go fetch the wheelchair. <laughs> By now it's settled in some sort of mud. This wheelchair has definitely seen better days. After dusting up the dirt and pooling the water best I can, I make my way back. Thanks. She offers the umbrella back, but I make sure to hold it above her. I keep the wheelchair steady with one hand as Olivia climbs into the seat, using her tail to help herself up. Aw, oh, that's a cool picture. <laughs> what about your own submission? I ruined it. I scratched from the back of my head. Eh, it wouldn't have won anyway. It's just a picture. Oh. I thought it was pretty okay. Hanging those words from Olivia sent a strange flash of heat to my face. It's not unpleasant, but again, those honest words from her really do cut through me for some reason. Thanks. A loud squeak draws my eyes to guts, and he stands a lot top Olivia's shoulder. Uh, you too? A wild smile stretches across Olivia's face. Hmm. I think it means Guts is saying, actually, it's so-so. Hey! Cut her some slack. Guts, Inko doesn't, Inko doesn't have time to make anything for the contest. He's got some high standards. Yep, that's why I got in so good. The sheer absurdity of it. I don't know which of us broke first, but our laughter filled the air. Only heard by the usual rainfall cuts of all of our noise. So, uh, now what? I don't know. I don't want to go just yet. It's still pretty worn out. Worn out. Smile crosses across my face. Wicked idea comes to mind. Well, too bad. What? I walk around Olivia, grinning like a mad idiot. Inko, what are you doing? Inko? Inko? Her head tries to follow me as I stand right behind her chair. I figured that pushing your chair around is really tiring, so how about I help you out? Olivia blushes and looks away. Fine, but it's just for today. Returning to campus was certainly awkward. Passerby shoot us looks. It's not some uncom- it's not the most common scene to see a girl in a wheelchair just rolling, sopping wet, and tracking mud in. So I wheeled her to my current photography class. On the way over, she keeps bending her head to peek at me. She's making sure I'm still there. Knocking on his closed door, the parasaur professor didn't even bat an eye at the poorly hidden girl. I say the dinosaur names how I pronounce them because I am dumb. <laughs> that- I- I ignore your pronouncing. <laughs> Once everyone has left, he closes the class door and locks it. So, care to explain? Explain, sir. He opens the door in the back and signals Olivia to come on out. The mud, the drench clothes, the decoration of sanctuary. I was having a bad day. She's looking a bit better, still drained, but she's not shivering. Her rat sits on her lap. I can extend a figure down to scratch under his chin. I can see that. He takes a seat nearby, against the nearby desk and waves a hand for Olivia to go on. When she doesn't, he shifts his hand to me. I look between the two of them. Mr. Ike has been expecting Lear. Olivia's pleading eyes. Ultimately, I shake my head in the net of... I just helped Olivia get out of the rain. Of course. He sledges further atop the desk. Can I tell you some other time? Sure. Whatever it was, it looks like you recovered from it pretty well. Olivia doesn't answer verbally, instead giving him a bashful smile and nod. Was it about your work again? Yeah. Oh, this girl! He turns to me and points a thumb at her. You'll know the work she's so concerned about, a bit about this absolutely wrecks the grading curve of my class. For the sake of the other students, I had to put a limit on her extra credit assignments. Really? Yeah! Never before would I consider such restraint. Why punish someone for working too hard, I would think to myself. Then four years ago, this little green goblin comes rolling in my class, half a semester and more, and a few anger calls from parents later, my hands were tied. This young lady simply does too dang much. Olivia smiles, but doesn't end up looking from her... I can... She doesn't look up from her pet. <laughs> it was... It was much better than all the other students. Well, no, I don't grade by technique. If I did, you'd be in big trouble, Inko. <gasps> Olivia's work was very good even, but the main thing is I admire how much motivated she can be. I haven't seen somebody so enthused by to just painting yet. I certainly haven't seen somebody enthused. I had to change the rules just like that. You were worried it would stop me. Was I? That definitely sounds like me, but it didn't stop you, not even a little. Heck, that year you even got me to see some things differently. I don't think I ever did anything like that. You did when you came in the class after the Friday after m before Mother's Day. Take a look at this. I'm handed a quill pen. And the first thing I note is how soft the feather portion is. 
It's a special pen you always use. It's actually from my wife. Whoa. Inspecting it closer, I can see more of the intricate details from the fi faded engravings on the shank to the maintained but worn out point. It's well made and kept, yet the feather and brass shows its age. This came in, in that afternoon with a whole stack of crumpled painting drafts, so fresh stages you couldn't get that right, so determined to make it perfect. But I say any of these would be great. Your aunt would love any of these. And she powders back, if it's not good enough for me, why should it be good enough for somebody I love? I did not have an answer, so I told her to take a step back. We'll take a few hours to go over the fundamentals once more. I sent her home trying to get it right over the weekend, and come Monday she returns and hugs me first thing. That Friday night, though, what she said was on my mind. I talked about it all night with my wife. Then that morning I decided to make a change for myself. My wife was molting at the time, so there was always a new feather or three in our blankets in the morning. I took the biggest one, preserved it right, got a bit of extra help to make it into a real pen, and I've used it ever since. It helps me to remember to do my job right for the people I care about, and for the people my students care about. I think it, that was, uh, it's like childlike reasoning that comes so naturally for the youth. That reasoning, it makes a type of innocent, earnest dedication to something I think I lost for a while. Don't give me so much credit. You haven't lost it, have you? God, don't lose it for me, okay? Okay. I get in yawns and stretches. You feeling all right to go to your next class? Yes, I'm ready. Great. He claps a hand over my back. We should do this again sometime. Mr. Ikaden ushers us out of this classroom as the late bell th uh, thrills, handing us a note he'd rapidly scrawled on. As more time passes, the art contest fades into the background. Last week, I had a scare when the principal scholar had called me into our office. I feared they figured out what Olivia did and assumed I was a part of it, just as she predicted. Luckily, that wasn't the case. Instead, she wanted to inform me they had no leads on who could have done it, the swap, and since it was tampered, to be removed from the contest. No skin off my back, honestly. As compensation, she gave me one of the runner-up prizes, a coupon for some pizza, for some pizza from some Italian restaurant called Dynamo's. They love their fucking puns, don't they? I'm not the biggest pizza fan, but not a bad- How could you not like pizza? What? Not a bad prize to get after all this, saving it for a rainy day. However, I found myself in a conundrum of my own doing. My peers concerned about my entries were resolved. I hadn't accounted for the new questions about my portfolio. Yeah, no, I can't unscrew this. The past three weeks, I've been staying after school, making use of one of the club rooms to practice. Yee, Shinko. Did you at least listen to any of the tips I gave you? Using everything I had at my disposal, namely the textbooks from Mr. Icon and how tutorials online. I'd stayed as late as possible trying to get the same skill level as Livia. As I stare into the horrid acrylic monstrosity before me, I could do nothing but weep up my own inadequacy. Dad, d d hydrate! <laughs> what am I even looking at? Are you trying to have like an abstract sort of thing here? It was an attempt to self portrait, actually. I could probably post it online, get some rich asshole would buy it. Is that good? No, never trust the opinions of people on the internet. I learned that the hard way. Splat. I don't even have the energy to get angry. Probably looks better now, at least. How did Olivia get so good at this? Olivia, please, you gotta have some, like, actual advice for me. She quietly hums to herself, slipping away the notebook she had splayed across her lap into a nearby bag. Well, when I want to draw, it's usually because I got something on my mind. What, like inspiration? Kinda. More so that I envision something and I want to put that on canvas. A muse, then. I don't get- Ah, go, go, go! Inko, Olivia, are you guys here? Damien, what's wrong? Is I- The hyperactive Dilophosaurus spots me, taking a final breath before jogging over. Guys, I need to ask you something. What, is everything alright? Is something happening? I can't help but panic. I've never seen Damien this flustered. Do you want to come to the arcade with me and Liz? Is that it? Yeah, this is what I said. Wait, when was this decided? I thought something bad had happened. Nope, just asking. Liz had already had the car wrapped and everything. How do you know we're even here? I didn't. I just kept opening doors until I found you two. I've been at it for a while now, actually. Damien's eyes dart to the canvas that lies on the floor next to me. You working on your next masterpiece? 
Ooh, paintings. Sai was probably one of your best trade secrets, huh? Lovia hides her snicker with her hand. Don't worry, I won't tell Sol. I lean to pick up the canvas and place it up right for deciding to remove the ugly painting and place it down to the corner of the room to dry. Anyways, how about it? To the arcade. The olive barn exhibitions. <laughs> She's a fucking gator. Don't call her by her dinosaur name. Call her Gator. Alligator. Her brow were lowered in contemplation as she considers the question. The arcade. Uh, it's not like I have any other plans today. Sure, why not? All right, let's go. Wait, 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 don't just... <laughs> and go. Olivia, there you are. Damien was taking so long to get you. So I was about to come find you myself. This time, both Damien and I are wheezing for air. Despite Olivia's protest and hesitation, Damien had wasted no time in grabbing her by the handlebars and sprinting for the exit. I chased them. I had chased after them, all the while Olivia screamed like a banshee as she was pushed through the hallway at breakneck space. <laughs> yeah, just... <laughs> I take a deep breath and stand upright. Olivia's claws are dug into her arm rest. She's definitely going to try and kill Damien with what her glare that she... Ha She's definitely trying to kill Damien with her glare, that he which she happily ignores. Why didn't you just message me or something? I wanted to, but... I didn't want to ruin your concentration, man. So instead, you kick the art room door open. Yep. Liz had the good grace to look embarrassed on Damien's half. But yeah, like, I gave you a little extra time, right? You've been staying late for, like, ever now. How <laughs> relaxed is not like you're the only one. Yeah, I sometimes need to stay behind for student council and club meetings. Right, sure, so, uh... Come on, the car's in the student section. How is she gonna fit in the car? I simply opened the door behind Liz's seat and watched the pile of soda cans <laughs> empty onto the pavement below. Uh, sorry, those are from this mor this morning! I just toss them back, see when I'm done. As far as Liz doesn't make you use a bag. I do. Damien pulls an overflowing plastic bag as if it for a trophy. So why haven't you tossed all those bottles out already? I'm saving them for a project about recycling. Plus, I'm going to use a couple of them for a sculpture. It saves me the trouble of going out to finding aluminum. <laughs> aluminum. <laughs> and I get to drink as much soda as I want. Don't really say anything as Damien scoops up the rest of the cans from the floor of the car and puts them in a new bag. In which he stuffs into the car's trunk before giving me and Olivia a thumbs up. Alright, dudes. Good to go. This little tail comes around. Why don't they have tail holes? My hand searches for the buckle of the seatbelt and brushes against something warm and soft. There's a tiny gasp of me as the comfortable mystery in my hand is yanked away. Huh? I look to Olivia. Her hand held to her chest. Her green face has a scarlet tinge and her mirror shade eyes glare holes through my head. You okay? The armored scale girl turns to her maw away from me. Booba. <laughs> I stifle a mystery chuckle at that. The warmth of my palm fades, however, as it leaves my hand feeling lost. <laughs> oh my goodness, I was like, I was wondering how she'd get in, but I didn't realize they just spiral. Anybody want a station? I don't think I've ever listened to the radio here either. Liz and Olivia hardly seem to glance at Damien's direction as well. Suit yourselves. Within the span of a few sections, the natural ambience of the road is replaced by loud sounds of decade-old rock music, sending vibrations throughout the car and everybody in it. And just as fun as it comes, however, it stops as Liz half haps really against the volume knob counterclockwise, toning the music down to a bearable level. Damien frowns for a moment, but he doesn't seem to contest her decision. Bzzzt. What the? I turned off all notification stuff except messages and calls. Between all the people I messaged, there's only one who was in inside the car. Checking the screen, I see? Any song requests, man? Wait, you've been texting? How long? Yeah, since, like, the first week of school. What the heck, dude? Let me see your phone. I hand over, open on the contact creation page. She taps the first few numbers and pauses. And she please yanks her phone from her coat pocket. She doesn't know her own mon number? I know my own number. It's... <laughs> <laughs> that was uncalled for. That's why I sent it. She giggled out her own joke. Despite being the butt of it in the mood of the car, it's too high to hold it against her. Uh, I just drank. I guess I drink again. <laughs> no, no, I drink. Nope, that's not how it works. <gasps> no! <laughs> God, no! <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> I, I'm not for your amusement. I'm just a simple PNG. Don't hurt me. Stop! <laughs> I've got to put a limit on that shit. <laughs> Waterport Extreme. <laughs> Where's Gator? Bowski. She's on fortune. She's a fortune. That's like being a Nazi. What's so funny? Oh, uh, nothing. Hey, Lizard Lounge. Oh boy, you're still browsing that, Olivia? Yeah. What is it? Don't tell him. It's this weird, uh, exclusive chat room that only allowed dinosaur women. Men and Razzlery specific human men are men. <gasps> Racial segre- I was just talking about- <laughs> She's a Nazi. <laughs> Fuck. Apollo, stop giving me the gift of fun. <laughs> predicting the future. It's the last safe house for us on the internet. I, I think there's probably better places on for, for that online you associate with it. Tell me about the racial segregation! It's not that. It's just how it has, used to be for our safety. Some dino girl can be doing anything at all, and there's always at least three guys in the comments saying she looks like... Don't say it. They also really bring down the quality of the site. Like, look, I've explained it in the, the rules that humans have, like, one-fifth the attention span of dinos. Liz groans while Olivia shows me her phone. The graph is blurred to hell, and I can't make up most of the text. I don't know how I feel about all this. What's not to get, Inko? Think about it. You're in history class. It sucks. So just remember, wait a second, I'm human. And stop listening. I wish I could do that. According to Lady- Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Louis Bet. <laughs> I think we're about like 20 minutes away from the arcade still. Don't worry, Inko. The water fountains here are like integrated. Shut up. Damien cackles to himself. Uh, unless I'm really close to the end, which I highly doubt, considering... I, I have an idea of what the end is. It's probably gonna be, like, a prom, or at least that's gonna happen near, the, like, the climax or something like that. This is just my guesstimation on um, promotional art I've seen. We're still in the beginning?! Oh, no. Oh, no!